Good day. I am Anne Limtembu from the Etebini Municipality Strategic Spatial Planning Branch. This is a presentation on the Etebini Municipality's draft spatial development framework for 2020-2021. This framework provides short, medium and long-term spatial development guidelines for the entire municipal area. The SDF, as it is called, has been advertised for public comment. This presentation provides an explanation of spatial planning, what it is and why it is important to undertake this high-level strategic spatial plan, as well as explaining how this plan is implemented across the city. It will also cover the spatial development framework planning process, highlighting challenges, spatial priorities, and new information added to this draft SDF 2020-2021, as well as showing the world relative to the SDF and spatial planning regions. Reference will also be made to the package of plans that are used as one of the tools to implement the SDF. So what is spatial planning? Spatial planning is a key instrument for establishing short, medium and long-term frameworks for territorial development, promoting spatial organization of land uses and reconciling competing policy goals. It aims to balance demands for development with the need to protect the environment and to achieve social and economic objectives as well as spatial transformation. Ultimately, when preparing the STF for any spatial plan, the plans must achieve a particular outcome. It must support regeneration and spatial transformation, alleviate poverty and create jobs, help grow the economy, and also ensure that the plan supports sustainable livelihoods and are responsive to climate change. By way of explanation, spatial transformation must reconcile spatially divided apartheid cities, and this requires us to distinguish between equality and equity. Equality is more concerned with providing the same level of services for all, whereas equity is more concerned with providing varying levels of services and resources to ensure that all can benefit from such services as the slide demonstrates. This is a key principle underpinning the spatial plans. Why do we prepare SDFs? All municipalities are legally required to prepare an SDF in terms of the Municipal Systems Act, SPLUMA, as well as the Itawini Spatial Planning and Land Use Management Bylaws. The SDF is the municipality's strategic spatial plan. The spatial plan is outlined both in the SDF as well as in Plan 1 of the Integrated Development Plan. One of the main reasons for preparing a spatial development framework is to manage urban growth and to achieve spatial transformation as outlined in Chapter 8 of the National Development Plan. The SDF is therefore a management tool that seeks to manage urban and rural development efficiently, equitably and sustainably. It guides decision making and directs public and private investment to ensure alignment with the city's key spatial priorities. The SDF provides the basis for developing the city's bulk infrastructure rollout and phasing plan. Furthermore, the SDF spatially aligns the city's budget to the delivery of services as well as a means of unlocking socio-economic opportunities. SDF responds to the needs of a wide and diverse customer base and requires us to engage with a number of stakeholders, such as ward committees. The following were identified as the different types of customers, namely internal, external, and institutional. The SDF is a long-term development framework that gives spatial direction to the IDP. As outlined, spatial development frameworks are spatial tools to steer future economic growth and development within the broader economic and spatial policy framework of government. It is the intention of the city to implement a citywide land use management system that is informed by the IDP and SDF. The package of plans is designed to fill the gap in information detail, so it proposes a series of plans to assist with translating the broad land use guidelines in the SDF into detailed land use proposals in a series of law order plans such as SDPs, LAPs, and precinct plans that ultimately inform new schemes and scheme reviews, thereby translating the strategic intent of the SDF into the scheme. This slide gives a graphic representation of series of plans at increasing level of detail. The process is an iterative one. It is important to understand that the SDF is broad-based and indicative 
of future land uses, it is not the same as a scheme. SDF is informed by key global, national, provincial and local policy and legislation. Examples of these include the Sustainable Development Goals, the NDP and IDP. The policies, along with an assessment of the social, economic, environmental and service conditions, helps us to identify the many challenges facing citizens in the municipality and helps us formulate a spatial vision. Based on the Spumer principles, this vision is articulated in a concept plan which sets out broadly the key structuring elements such as nodes, public transport corridors, metropolitan open spaces that informs the long-term spatial arrangements of land uses and development opportunities. This is translated into specific land use proposals and land use guidelines to inform scheme reviews while still remaining at a broad and strategic level, as well as recommending the priority areas for city investment in infrastructure and economic and social development. This is outlined in Chapter 8 of the SDF, namely the Capital Investment Framework. It is therefore important to obtain input from various stakeholders as possible so their concerns can be considered and included in the SDF with each annual update. The draft SDF is then advertised. It calls out for public comment before it is amended and submitted to full council for final adoption. Therefore, it is submitted to the MEC of Cocta in compliance with Spluma. Etawini Municipality has been experiencing an increase in the number of natural disasters over the last five years, which often results in the poor and vulnerable population experiencing the most impacts. The SDF and package of plans pays particular attention to environmental trends and global climate predictions that an area might experience, such as the Isipin Local Area Plan that highlighted the high risk of floods as an important environmental challenge in that given area, and makes recommendations on how to mitigate the impact of natural disasters in the municipality. The SDF details climate change predictions and trends within the municipality as well as the disaster management sector plan. An SCA is a legal requirement in terms of SPUMA as well as the Municipal Planning and Performance Management Regulation. Environmental quality provides the foundation for social well-being, economic prosperity, as well as a sustainable future. The current phase of the SEA involves the environmental status quo. What is the state of the environment in terms of air quality, water quality, terrestrial ecosystems, estuaries, and coastal ecosystems? The initial analysis against the SEA provides a preliminary indication of whether the city's proposed development path is sustainable in relation to the current state of the natural environment. In general, the state of the natural environment is poor and is below sustainability thresholds. This situation is likely to be exacerbated under current development trajectories and under climate change. There have been some positive achievements that have improved environmental quality, such as reduced industrial sulfur dioxide emissions through stringent legislation. There are still opportunities to improve the environmental status quo and to maximize the value of areas where environmental quality is good. Etewini Rural Planning Challenges Approximately 68% of Etewini municipality is rural in character. 80% of this rural area is under traditional authority and ownership. The predominant land use in rural areas is mainly residential with limited pockets of commercial agriculture. The key challenges identified in rural areas include densification, whereby there are more dwelling units per hectare than the suitable number of dwelling units in such given areas. The municipality has a limited ability to manage land uses in traditional areas due to the system of dual governance, as well as the capacity to service rural nodes. There is new information that has been added in the draft SDF, such as priority housing development areas and the status quo of the strategic environmental assessment, environmental component. The district development model process is outlined and cultural and historical tourism locations have been included. The package of plans have been updated and recommendations have been made to shorten land use procedures in priority housing development areas 
the details of which still need to be finalized. The wall-to-wall scheme review process has been updated, as well as the monitoring and evaluation outcomes in order to include the 2018-2019 findings. The Etewini municipality continues to actively mainstream climate adaptation and mitigation in the SDF. What is the SDF trying to achieve? It is promoting a compact city with a strategic focus on protecting environmentally sensitive areas, promoting agricultural development and limiting spore in rural areas, as well as focusing on higher intensity development in urban nodes along public transit corridors and spatially targeting the urban core as well as integration zones. Special priority areas in the SDF align with the focus on the prime investment corridor in the built environment performance plan. Detailed plans have been done for most of these areas. Priority investment areas. Etawini municipality has integration zones that are located on prime investment corridors, such as Bridge City and Umlazi that are located on the C2 public transport corridor, Pine Town and Guangmashu Bridge City are located on the C3 public transport corridor. The economic green fields include the Aerotropolis, Okonovia, the Strategic Investment Project 2, Cateridge, Keystone, Hammersdale, Ilobu South, the port, as well as the back of port. The rural priority investment areas on Umalanga, Watlimba, Umzinyati, Umbumbulu, and Umnini. The Etewini Municipality SDF is divided into four planning regions, namely the North, the South, Central and Outer West Spatial Planning Regions. The wards have been inserted in this slide to help people get a better idea in which planning region a ward is located, so it is possible to see which plans have been adopted in that region. The approved spatial plans include revitalizing township nodes, the CBD revitalization or urban renewal, supporting transit-oriented development, and stimulating economic development. These are outlined and detailed in the Council-approved strategic spatial plans. In terms of rural planning, we have Council-approved spatial plans, such as Umnini Rural Scheme, Tsimbini Rural Functional Area Plan, Ward 105 Local Area Plan, and Settlement Plan. The Northern Rural Settlement Plan is still in progress. Etewini Municipality Council approved spatial plans for the central region include the Pine Town CBD Node Precinct Plan, the Pine Town South Local Area Plan, as well as the Clement Guadabegog Township Regeneration Proposed Land Use Plan. The Pine Town CBD is one of the areas within the municipality that have regeneration plans in order to roll out bulk infrastructure and unlock social economic opportunities. This plan has informed the implementation of new housing opportunities in the Pine Town area. The Pine Town South Local Area Plan informs the proposed land uses for areas such as Gwandengezi and Luganda in the central region. The C3 Public Transport Corridor, as outlined, is a prime investment corridor that connects Bridge City with the Pine Town CBD through the MR577. The main objective of the development of this corridor is to maximize social economic opportunities in close proximity to it to assist with the functioning of both areas. Outer West is identified as the most environmentally diverse region in Itawini Municipality. And this is distinguished in the Cutter Ridge Land Use Framework. The Hillcrest Gillard's Truth Corridor Conceptual Land Use Management Plan identifies that these areas have social economic opportunities for employment for those in close proximity to them. Hence, the plan encourages development within this corridor. The North Region has the Northern Urban Development Corridor that envisions developing the area into a mixed-use development corridor through the integration, upgrading and intensification of existing development and creating new opportunities. The Watson North and Greylands Functional Area Plan and Draft Scheme seeks to provide services and create development opportunities in the given area. The agglomeration of development in Kenobia is an outcome of the Kenobia Framework Plan. 
The south region of Eterini municipality has, amongst others, the Umkomazi proposed land use framework, the Umlazi nodal regeneration plan, as well as the Nsimbini Kologoto rural functional plan. The Umlazi local area plan and nodal regeneration plan seeks to create economic development and shift towards mixed uses in an area that is predominantly residential. The Nzimbini Kologoto Rural Functional Plan addresses the population growth in the area and notes that it increases the need for service provision by the municipality. The aim of such projects is to optimize development in different areas by creating or identifying social economic opportunities. Likewise, the rural and urban spatial plans consider community members in terms of proposals and identify strategic or priority investment areas in close proximity that can assist in terms of achieving spatial transformation. In summary, we have prepared a development concept or vision for the whole of Itsevini and translated this into future land uses. This is provided in the SDF as well as law order plans. We have identified the priority projects across the entire city that need to be undertaken. We have undertaken numerous law order and detailed plans and regeneration projects to help translate this strategic vision into land use guidelines and zones. Our plans recommend ways to make Etsewini attractive to investors to improve living conditions and protect the environment for all, thereby facilitating development in the city in terms of the vision and the single city plan. It is important to ensure that all nine departments and spheres of government collectively work towards implementing these plans. Each year, the SDF is submitted to COPTA for assessment. The SDF is commended for the detailed report and attempt to becoming SPLUMA compliant. Progress and tremendous improvement is noted. Consistency and detailed forward planning is noted. Climate change and mitigation programs are commended commended for the inclusion of a spatially depicted long-term spatial vision. There are improvements that are noted in the Disaster Management Sector Plan, as well as the alignment of the SDF and IDP. The municipality is commended for the incorporation of proper demographics into the IDP. This slide demonstrates the SDF planning process. Stakeholder engagement and sector engagement is undertaken in all our planning processes. The SDF 2020-2021 planning process was initiated in July, with the Gazette Notice of Adoption of the 2019-2020 SDF. In August, the SDF process plan was finalized, and the IDP, DEF, and the SDF were assessed to ensure that they were all aligned. During September, the SDF started to address the gaps identified by the MEC of COPTA. During October, there were cross-boundary engagements with institutional customers and various sectors that contribute to the SDF, and they updated their sections within the SDF accordingly. In November, the budget process was initiated. In February 2020, the draft SDF was tabled at Council, and a call was made for the draft sector projects, budgets, and project timelines. The timelines highlighted in red are currently ongoing and left to do. Due to the global pandemic, open days have been compromised. However, comments or concerns may be expressed to the contact details that are provided hereafter. For further information, please visit the web address provided on this slide for the Spatial Development Framework as well as the package of plans of Etewini Municipality. Thank you.